Mike McCool here. I'm in the Royal Examiner studio, and with me today is Charles Lixon. It goes by Chips. It's a lot of, you know, for he's a, he's a lawyer, or was, or is. Once a lawyer, always a lawyer. That is true, <laughs> true, true, yes. And, and what we're going to talk about today, other than a lot of things he's done, is a new book that he's just released. It's called A Warrior of Many Faces. I'll let Mark zoom here in on the cover, so we'll get a picture of that. You got that there, Mark? Okay, good. So we want to do a plug for the, when you see it on Amazon, you'll be able to recognize it. So, Chips, tell me about the book. Well, uh, first of all, uh, let me um, I just suggest that uh, they can get it locally also at the Royal Oak Bookshop. You can get everything at the Royal Oak Bookshop. Yes, you can. <laughs> but there is a signing. Uh, I'll be there on Saturday, uh, December 14th from 12 uh, uh, actually from 2 to 4 in the afternoon okay. and um, uh, hopefully we will get uh, uh, from the printer a uh, collection of books at that time. Um, well, uh, this book uh, actually came out of knowing um, J.C. Herbert Bryant, J.C. in the book, um, from a, a friendship of quite a few years uh, needless to say, uh, I was quite surprised to learn of his extensive uh, background uh, in, a, in many fields. And as I was doing research for the book, and I, I will tell you that um, this book, as opposed to other books I've written, uh, this is a fact-based fiction uh, book. So it really reads like an, an exciting uh, novel. Um, of suspense, but the, the, the truth of the matter is uh, everything is true. And I was as surprised as uh, readers hopefully will be that any one person could have accomplished uh, so much. Um, and uh, he joined the Navy uh, when he didn't have to. Uh, Herb was the heir to a substantial uh, fortune, I think it's fair to say, um, be, because his um, heirs uh, go way back to uh, initially the land grant uh, from Lord uh, to Lord Fairfax, uh, and uh, he didn't really have to work, as far as I know. Uh, he chose to work uh, substantially all of his professional life until quite recently in the public sector. Uh, in, first in the military and then in, in government. Uh, and uh, for quite a while, uh, his activity uh, included uh, an association with a clandestine U.S. government agency, uh, for the record, and for the television camera, and for the many readers <laughs> of the Royal Examiner, and for uh, many people who will probably see this interview in other places because I am going to forward it uh, well, on. We appreciate it. Well, let's, let's start with... Who J.C. is? Who is J.C.? That's a, that's a um, very interesting question, uh, and it's a question that's been posed uh, a number of times by uh, different people and uh, uh, different uh, members of the press. Um, J.C. Uh, Herbert Bryant uh, uh, was uh, born just really at the beginning of the Second World War in Washington, and I'm not going to go through his uh, whole life. Um, this is not a biography. I, right, right. I will tell you, he wanted me to write a biography. <laughs> uh, when I started uh, working on this, I said, this is really exciting, but I don't know all the details. I don't know every ship, every place you've been, and so forth. Give me, uh, if you're comfortable, a little leeway, uh, and thus it is a fact-based fiction. See where it but, goes. Yeah, see where it goes. And it gave me a little bit of freedom to um, uh, make up some names if necessary, but also we have some uh, real uh, names uh, there. Uh, I will tell you uh, this, that after joining the Navy at a uh, ripe age of 16, he was turning 17 when he uh, was to go to basic training, which uh, fit him into a category that he was legally uh, empowered to uh, join the Navy, uh, and he had his parents' permission uh, anyway. Um, and he was in the Navy uh, for um, six years initially, and um, in uh, during that service he began 
uh, certain uh, clandestine, I call it clandestine, um, you, may, uh, you may call it uh, security uh, or classified um, positions. Uh, anyway, um, first one uh, I, which is covered in the book is the Office of Naval Intelligence, O-N-I. And um, I talk about something that he discovered when he was at the Boston uh, Navy Yard, and it comes all the way through the, the book, including um, a, um, I guess you would call it a friendly incursion uh, from the Navy base at Guantanamo up to uh, the rebels in the hills near Guantanamo, and that would be uh, Fidel Castro. Well, you mentioned that on the cover. It says, yes. in Castro's Cuba and beyond, so I assume mm -hmm. that the majority of this book is, is tied to that particular locale? Uh, I'd say about a, roughly about a third of the book uh, uh, is related to his Navy career. And his Navy career included uh, two times when he was in Cuba. And the first time, and I call it, I call the chapter um, Cuba Fidel Castro C, meaning yes. And uh, the last time he was in Cuba, uh, it was clear that uh, Castro was not going to be our friend, and uh, especially Che Guevara, who never changed, uh, or never gave any hint that he might be amenable to a sure. relationship with the United States. Um, it, it was clear that he was not going to be our friend. And uh, there uh, are other adventures that are specified uh, uh, in the book, including um, a couple of uh, pretty realistic combat scenes where he saw a uh, real combat with the rebels initially and also uh, f for the Navy um, in something that, as far as I know, is never has never been disclosed before. Well, we know a lot of things went on in Cuba during that 60s uh, era yeah. yes. and uh, things that we're just now starting to yes. find out about. Uh, and yes. uh, it, it was an interesting time, as we well know, uh, there, when President Kennedy uh, was in office, and uh, that yeah. was a pretty well um, intense time in our yes, country. Yes, you're, you're quite right. One thing that is not included uh, in the book, and I, I should be clear, um, here's the lawyer in me uh, speaking <laughs> for due diligence yes, purposes yes. and so forth, uh, is uh, JC, which uh, is his uh, nickname, sure. and uh, it was his military and government um, na name that he used. Um, he was not involved at all directly in the Bay of Pigs or indirectly. What he was involved with is after the Bay of Pigs fiasco, the United States um, changed its approach to Cuba from, shall we call it, overt action to uh, covert. Covert, exactly. And, um, but um, I did not know the level of, shall we call them, Nixon had a good term, or at least a good term during the Nixon uh, phase, and that is dirty tricks. So um, we we did we as a government. I assume uh, anything that JC did had government Navy slash government approval. Um, we were pretty good at uh, doing dirty tricks against uh, the Cubans. And um, a, a number of them are specified in the book, and they really did happen. Well, it sounds like an interesting read, and it, it looks like it'd be a quick read. I mean, it's a nice, thick book here, but uh, it you got to, it's obviously, it's not for 20-year-olds to read because I can see the font, you know, yes, yes. <laughs> but it is. I read through yes. parts of it. It's very interesting, yes. so I think uh, it'll be a good read. Now, you'll be at the Royal Oak Bookshop on December 14th. Yes, which is Saturday. It's a good day. Local authors have been yeah. coming in and out of there here lately. Yeah. We've had a few here in the Royal Examiner. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a great work that Tammy and them, yeah. that they do down there to bring yeah. authors in. Yeah. And you'll be able to meet meet Chips yeah. and do that. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have written a lot of other books. I remember when I uh, talked to you earlier, yeah. yes. and, and I've seen some, uh, but they were always, I call them training manuals. Well, but, uh, but, you uh, know, like I, ironing it out, seven simple steps to resolve conflict. I know you're big in the conflict yes, resolution. That's true. This is the one that's always funny. Yes. Ethics for government employers, <laughs> employees, yes. excuse I, me. So, I was asked by the publisher <laughs> to um, write that book. And um, this is uh, Chris Publications, which 
at the time was the publisher of uh, uh, six of my seven prior books. Uh, they uh, were one of the largest training publishers, you're absolutely right, uh, in, in the United States. And uh, ironing it out, uh, I, it's not yet written. Um, ironing it out is still available uh, on Amazon, the early edition, but it's been uh, out of print since 1996. And uh, after um, the Warrior, short name Warrior for many faces, uh, I'm uh, going to do a book on the U.S. Marshall's Foundation, uh, which will be a data uh, book. And then I am going to upgrade, if that's the right term, uh, ironing it out and, and hopefully bring it uh, right up to date and uh, put updated it out. 2020. Updated 2020. Updated <laughs> 2020. Um, many, uh, I mean, the principles of sure. uh, the seven simple steps remain the same. But many of the references are a little bit dated, and I, I feel it's now time to bring them up to date. Bring it so some of these millennials yes. will know what you're yes. talking about. Yes, and, and I might add, Crisp Publications is no longer in existence, unfortunately, as uh, is uh, true of so many publishers. They've been sold and resold and sold, and um, I'm not quite sure where they are uh, now, where those books are now, but I will say this. Um, I guess being a lawyer and so forth. I did retain copyrights uh, in most of uh, my books, and they will uh, come out in oh. 2020. Well, it sounds like you found something to do, and you're, you're involved in the art world, and yes, you're involved yes, in the yes. uh, writing the writing yes. world, and a lot of things here. Uh, one of our local authors and uh, entrepreneurs. I mean, you're trying to trying to find something to do in your retirement age. Well, uh, like retirement age is, co is correct. But, <laughs> but no retirement. <laughs> no, no retirement for me. Yeah. I can relate to that. Yes, I yes, can relate to exactly. that. Why stop? You're having fun. Yes, I, That's I it. am. And well, I'm meeting some very interesting people along the way. Uh, Herb's, uh, J.C. Herb's um, friends are among uh, at top officials, uh, not necessarily now, but they were under... Uh, his uh, tenure, so to speak. Uh, one of his closest friends was Ron Ziegler, the press secretary right. of President Nixon. And Herb himself was the uh, a captain of the presidential yacht in Florida called the Coco Lobo uh, for three years. So he knew uh, B.B. Rebozo and Bob Abernathy and all the... Well, anyone people. that's got four names, you know, you can't, you know, that's... You know, yes. They... <laughs> no comment on that uh, for... <laughs> Uh, obvious purposes. Yes, yes, yeah. Well, it's an interesting read, and we hope people will Thank pick you. it up and uh, and read it. Uh, you. And you'll and we'll see you on December fourteenth. So that's December fourteenth at the Royal Oak Bookshop on South Royal Avenue here in Front Royal. Stop by around two two to four two, two to, four. to four. I might add, uh, date is already set in Winchester, and I know that you okay. reach sure. uh, the Winchester audience as well. And that's January uh, Sunday, January twelfth. Uh, one to three at the Winchester Book Gallery uh, on the downtown mall. Well, that'd be interesting. Yes. It's yeah. great that local authors can have a place to, um, you know, to reach out and, yes. and meet people. And people that do read a lot yes. like that. I yes. mean, and they, and they do like uh, meeting mm -hmm. the author and setting and Because mm -hmm. I know you'll uh, sit and talk to them for hours. Um, or minutes. <laughs> yes, yes, one or the other. Yes, for sure. Well, we'll see you then on December 14th. Again, December 14th, Royal Oak Bookshop. Uh, here in Front Royal. Thanks again, Chips. Appreciate you Thank coming you. in. Thanks, Thank you. Mike.